our presentation is uh, on the image uh, uh, caption generation for the Clicker 8K data set, uh, uh, Deepak. So like we are the team eight of eight people. So uh, so what is the agenda of uh, uh, today's presentation of the project? So, so we'll be talking about what actually motivated us to uh, take this project up and we'll give it a bird's eye view at a overall, uh, you know, or what is the project we are trying to do and what is the uh, concepts being learned and what are the things we actually learned and all in this project. And we talk about uh, how we extract the CN features and various other things and challenges and things. Okay. So before, like, uh, to get started, right? So, so we were just going through the, uh, uh, you know, what a project to choose and all. So we are eight people, and most of the projects actually took a very small to uh, the size. I mean, for the team size of us. Okay. So then we came across this uh, uh, from your uh, this thing, the show I can tell. So I think this is really actually, uh, you know, motivated us to go forward because it has a combination of two things, images as well as the uh, text, and which is a kind of a new to most of us. Uh, so that is one thing. And uh, setting also, so when we are going to one of the summary papers on this, so so they, they talked about actually this can, uh, so when you extend this use case, for example, as a voice assistant to some physically uh, like impaired, like, you know, people who can't see, right? So this can work as a uh, kind of a, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, as a uh, helper uh, to, to those of us. I think that's also a really interesting use case uh, coming out of this uh, thing, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is a overall bird's eye view. So, uh, how what exactly we have taken care so basically what we have done so first and foremost so we created a one persistent storage in g drive and we decoupled each and every part for example cnn will run separately and rnn in the training will separate uh, run separately and the inferencing will run separately and the, everything will run in in its own way okay so that you know so we uh, we wanted to one say the tra uh, training cost and the training times also so that is the one uh, thing we actually followed here deeper Okay, so uh, so basically what we do, so uh, so we'll give them uh, much details in, uh, while going forward. Uh, so so basically we create, we take the input images and we we place it in, we took the CNN, we put, we put it in one of these things, and we basically we take those uh, uh, same features and we we try to predict on the uh, attention and the decoder side, and we we get the output. Okay, so what exactly concepts being implemented? What exactly we learned? So number one is uh, this image pre-processing techniques uh, for uh, various uh, uh, the con basis and all. Other uh, interesting aspect was what we learned was uh, transfer learning in the feature extraction is anyways fine, but the, the sequence to sequence modeling. So there are multiple, uh, what we, uh, maybe we just touched a very tip of the iceberg, but we, this actually opened up so many uh, new uh, areas for us. For example, let's say uh, if I take uh, uh, one of the, uh, in the sequence to sequence generation, the LSTMs or the GRU, right? So we, we got to know about the, some teacher forcing LO. Okay. And uh, we also, so while uh, doing inferencing, right? So, uh, so we, all, we also got to know uh, got to know about the beam search and the greedy search. So we uh, may not, uh, we didn't get the time to implement those things, but actually I think uh, this actually opened up like a lot of uh, uh, these things, uh, Deepak. So then, uh, so we also learned, so we talk about the challenges. So how we actually, uh, um, uh, like you know, move ourselves and try uh, try to make our hand dirty with the TensorFlow coding. Uh, so that is, I think, a very good uh, takeaway from this project. Uh, uh, so I, I think uh, most of our team members also agree to that. And uh, also, like you know, we got to know. Uh, so till now, we have seen only a single caption generator. Also, when you are basically uh, using a sequence of the uh, words, so like sequence words prediction, right? So we we never know about these metrics called Bellu and all. I think uh, even I, I think we can also uh, uh, you know move in the uh, this uh, directions. Uh, uh, Deepak, so that's where the concept, what, what and exactly we implemented and what we learned from this overall project. Uh, with this, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll request uh, Satyam to take over on the, how, what is the encoding of scenery picture? Over to you, Satyam. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sasi. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I will be talking about the scene and feature extraction. So uh, currently we downloaded a data set from the Flickr data set. It has 8K images. And we split the images into uh, 75, 15, 15 into test, train, and validation. And, and we make a data set of 128 batches. So the, each image has a five probable captions. So that is being used as a training for the model. And we do image pre-processing by resizing it or co converting into a JPG format and converting and decoding into a RGB channels. And uh, as you see in the diagram, like uh, once the image is uh, passed into the CNN network, it skips a uh, image vector. And that image vector is being saved as a persistible format, uh, a NumPy array. 
so uh, we initially tried with the different model like the the first one the base attack would be uh, vgg16 again the vgg16 is a 16 layer uh, model it's do the down sampling of uh, uh, 224 into 24 into a 7 cross 7 uh, vectors so uh, uh, so this is our initial and we got it and uh, that is being passed as a decoder uh, uh, like uh, decoding part so uh, uh, that decoding part is explained by somebody else. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the models that we have tried at the CNN side. The, the, the next thing that we tried, the ResNet 50. So again, uh, as you told in the class, right, the bigger the model, the bigger the network, the more feature it will learn. So our target is basically to learn more feature from the image. So uh, as the skip connection involved, so it's uh, it's uh, uh, to involve the uh, overfitting and all those things. So. Uh, uh, the next target that uh, we tried different model like Inception V3, again, uh, that is uh, computationally efficient and uh, uh, it has a factorized convolution layer and uh, it has a 48 layers and that being used as a pre-trained model. Uh, and uh, all the models are having a different input and output shapes. So we adapted to that one. And uh, once uh, that uh, the training takes a lot of time, a lot of time, in fact, uh, even for extracting uh, so many uh, features from all the data set. So uh, we come up with the approach, uh, like uh, we we save this feature vector because uh, what decoder needs is just a feature vector. We save the uh, this in the form of serializable format, like uh, dot uh, N NPY, like NumPy array. And uh, uh, once that is set, like uh, we do a text corpus we have, we do the pre-processing of text corpus and we have a text vector. So we have a two input, which is going to the decoder side. One is like a text vector, which is a caption. And one is like a image, uh, which is having a feature vector. So these vector can be trained separately. Now the decoding part, uh, uh, Sumit will explain further. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Satyam. Sashi, can you move? Yeah. So uh, the first model we thought of was a model without attention, a simple model. But uh, like to, to make things better, right? Uh, we tried uh, exploiting the layer subclassing here yeah, uh, that we have learned in our classes and tutorials. So uh, uh, so as a layer subclassing, right? For uh, this LSTM model, the simple uh, without attention model, we made three classes, uh, one for embedding and then for CNN encoder and decoder. Uh, the CNN encoder uh, was the one which Satyam explained, right? The CNN encoder gave us the feature vector. So that was the input input to the encoder layer. Again, the encoder layer just contained the dense layer to like modify the dimensions to, to be added to the decoder uh, input. So that was just with the CN, uh, CNN encoder, which is the encoder layer. For decoder, uh, the captions were fed as the input and then uh, we use an embedding layer. The embedding layer uh, used word embedding as well as positional embedding. And then uh, it was added with the encoder output uh, getting from the CNN models. And then, uh, right, uh, those uh, those were added and then passed to the LSTM. We, we used LSTM because uh, we wanted to like exploit the the, uh, the sequential nature of the of the English sentence, right? So uh, we use LSTM for that. This LSTM uh, would uh, would give us output on. So it would give us a it would return a sequence to us. Again, that sequence would again go to a dense layer, and then uh, then the final dense layer would uh, would uh, would output a vector of size vocabulary, uh, like predicting all the probabilities of the word uh, occurring there. So this was basically our uh, the model without uh, uh, without attention. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'll now we'll go go to the next slide and explain you the model with attention. Karthi, can you take it from here? Yeah, thanks, Sumit. Hello. Um, so uh, now with respect, uh, so so far uh, without attention mechanism when we use the RNN, right? So uh, it uses that entire image and uh, uh, it uses that entire image uh, pretty much at every cell uh every time step to produce the output so it doesn't it treats that all parts of the image equally however uh, uh as uh, specified in the paper uh, so 
there is a uh, attention mechanism has been included so that you can find only a specific or relevant part of the image and then that is actually used to predict the next one in the sequence and uh, so with that this architecture is being used wherein uh, we'll have the uh, attention uh, we'll have the encoder uh, input data uh, image encoded uh, that actually gets into the attention layer uh, to form a context vector and that together with embedded uh, uh, that together with a uh, uh, text vectorized embed, uh, one uh, feeding to the gru to uh, generate the sequences uh so could please go to the next one yep so what we have actually done is like uh, we use this spatial uh, attention mechanism uh, as stated in the paper so uh, in this case uh, uh, we are actually generating the context vectors at each and every time step and that's what is actually being uh, fed uh, into the uh, rln based decoder as an input so uh, since we have actually introduced the concept of context vector right i'll just give a brief about what context vector is uh, uh, so i think similar to what we had actually seen uh, in our tutorials where we had done the translation uh, where the attention score was actually included right on the uh, i think in the tutorial we had actually used the self attention scores for the translation in this scenario what we we are creating this context vector and how this context vector is created and th this context vector is nothing but the scaled uh, representation of this uh, image feature uh, based on their importance so uh, now in order to calculate this attention scores this is nothing but the attention scores applied uh, on top of the input feature vector that we actually uh, get from the encoder so this attention scores uh, actually quantify the importance and they are actually generated from the hidden state of of each timestamp a uh, time steps along with the uh, applied on uh, along with the features that's been used uh, and this attention score is actually calculated using something called the additive attention mechanism uh, and then uh, we feed this uh, context vector uh, and before that we actually have this uh, gru layer that's been created uh, and this gru layer it's been actually created in say uh, you know it's been configured to actually return the state and the sequence and uh, and the state is mainly needed uh, because this is what actually is being used to generate the context vector and uh, together with this context vector the, when we actually feed it the uh, uh, caption uh, along with the caption embeddings into the gru layer uh, gru layer the vocabulary size will be uh, uh, the vocabulary uh, sorry uh, the output will be predicted based on the uh, probability of each uh, a word from the vocabulary and uh, in this case the training uh, during training phase what we do is uh, the previous target in the sequence is for a previous target is nothing but the ground truth is what being fed as a sequence uh, whereas in the inference we actually use the predicted output is being fed back to the uh, next layer uh, next uh, next time step so you could just go to the next one Uh, the next one. So uh, these are a few, few of the challenges that we actually faced. Uh, one thing is uh, anything implementing directly with the concepts from the paper. So uh, it's quite abstract. It's a bit abstract for us. And then translating those abstract concepts to the implementation. This is where we face a lot of challenge. Uh, so we have to actually take a lot of help from the online, especially medium. Uh, in order to think about this implementation uh, and and the second one is we are actually it was uh, when we created this pipeline it was taking larger time for the feature extraction and this feature extractions uh, um, it was almost for every type of uh, uh, features like uh, for uh, i think for uh, uh, vgg was fine but uh, inception was actually taking almost more than an hour for us to actually extract the features. So what we did is we, as uh, uh, Satyam stated, and so we had actually, we persisted that uh, uh, features 
uh, so that we can actually include the model training as another uh, pipeline altogether. And uh, we have been so much accustomed to this NumPy array and transitioning to the TF coding patterns, uh, uh, especially uh, exploiting the data set abstractions uh, was a little difficult because it also introduces this lazy evaluation as well. And uh, this next one is the creating this custom decoder architecture. Uh, especially using this layer subclassing, even though it's been taught in the tutorial. So, but we aren't that comfortable. So we had to actually practice some more, some more to implement this custom decoder architecture. And uh, finally is interpretation scores. Though uh, I think we have uh, for the entire translation, we have a different uh, 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 different metrics altogether uh, for the evaluation like Meteor. So, uh, that's where we face the issue how do we actually interpret them and then which one is a better uh, which one is a better for which one should be considered for our use case uh, shashi could just go to the next slide so uh, we actually evaluated a different model so when you speak about the scores we have this blue meteor and then rouge and uh, I think Meteor actually takes both precision and recall and then it actually does consider the synonyms as well and uh, the way we have actually seen our model uh, uh, in this use case caption base so we have the synonyms being actually generated uh, in the similar context so that's what we thought could be a better indicator in our case ashish could please go to the next one yeah this was the few samples that we had actually generated from the model so uh, if you look into the first one uh, where, uh, for the skateboard on the test images. Uh, so the actual caption is the scale putter in the seal who jumps on the orange traffic cone. Um, but what has been predicted based on the test, uh, based on what it has actually learned from the uh, training images. So uh, it's this person in stunt. In fact, he is actually performing the stunt, but it, in, it did not give the ac uh, actual caption what it is supposed to be, but it gave something which is closer to indicating it's kind of generalizing it to some extent. And the, if you look into the another image where Engumen wearing the mask, so uh, it predicted in a young girl uh, sitting in bathtub while it snows. So I think uh, the reason why it actually predicted the bathtub is because of the mask that she has actually worn. And then the snow uh, could be because on the back, uh, in the backdrop, you can see a few of those white patches. So that's what it actually detected as a snow. Um, and uh, um, there's three men, three men seated looking through the glass uh, accented by green light. Uh, this, it did not give anything. It just uh, got it as an unknown. So which we are still uh, uh, could not uh, find it out why it did not give that. Um, and then, uh, and there's a uh, brown greyhound is wearing blue muzzle and blue collar. It gives the brown furry blown, brown uh, dog jumps upon a mountain. So it just says it is jumping. Uh, so we don't know whether it's on a mountain or not. And the other one is two girl arm wrestle as another observes. So a and it predicted a child is playing uh, a dining room, including two girls dancing in magazine in front. So uh, even though the dining wasn't there in the real caption, it actually predicted uh, uh, the dining uh, table uh, and interpreted it. So you could please go to the next room. This is the team split and then the task that we did. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the nice presentation and uh, yeah, good.